You know, over the years, people have asked me, what's your story, Jim? Well, I decided I'd take just a minute and share with you how I got here today and what my journey has been like over the last 38 years. I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. My dad worked in the city of Chicago, took the train in every day. Well, my dad asked me if I wanted to attend a college night in McCormick Place in Chicago. McCormick Place is an enormous amphitheater convention center in Chicago, and there were it's going to be over a thousand schools at this college night. So we had planned on me taking the train to Chicago that morning. And when I did, right before that, uh, a few hours before, snow started coming down. By the end of the day, there were over 20 inches of snow. Now, in Chicago, that's really not a big deal. Snow in Chicago is just part of the routine there. So that wasn't the issue getting downtown but it was just cold and snowy and dreary as it was for the first uh, 18 years of my life in Chicago and when I started going with my dad down each of the rows and there were hundreds of rows of, of booths of colleges I turned the corner and saw a guy with a golden tan and he said it was 85 degrees when I left Las Cruces, New Mexico this morning. And come to find out, he was from New Mexico State University. Well, I had no idea where New Mexico State University was. In fact, I wasn't even 100% sure if New Mexico was in the United States or not. But I made the decision right there and then that 85 degrees in the middle of winter sounded really great to me. And so as only an impulsive 17, 18 year old can do, I made the decision to go to New Mexico State University not knowing anything about it. And things in those days were a lot different. When you showed up on a college campus, you didn't have a week to prepare. I showed up on a Saturday, started classes on Monday morning. And there was an enormous culture shock for me coming out of Chicago, going down into uh, the Southwest, into uh, New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico State was 45 minutes from Juarez and the Mexican border. And so it was a different culture and a different environment. Well, one of the things that I continued to do from, from high school, I was a three sport athlete, so I continued to go into the gym every day even though I didn't go to college on a scholarship, I still uh, liked lifting weights and started competing in powerlifting. So every day you could find me at three o'clock in the afternoon it, at the New Mexico State University gym lifting for about two hours. Well, at about four o'clock every afternoon, uh, the track team would descend upon the gym and the sprinters would do their routine, but the shot putters and discus and javelin throwers would have a different routine. They would head into the weight room. And there was a shot putter who was 6'2 and 280 pounds. And every time he would come into the room, he would just part the, the sea of students that were in there. And he had... The, uh, he had the run of the gym. When he wanted to use the bench press, people backed off. Well, one Friday afternoon, I can still remember it, I was lifting weights and had just put the weights back. This hulking individual came over the top of me and said, I'm having a Bible study next week and you're coming. Not, can you come? Will you come? I would appreciate you coming. He just said, and you're coming. And my response was, well, uh, yes, sir, I, I will. And he said, but before we do that, I want to share with you something that's very important to me. And so I would like to meet you in the student cafeteria on Tuesday. And I met him. 
and he shared with me a little booklet called The Four Spiritual Laws, which taught me how I could have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And from that day on, my life changed. And I was involved and had a, had a deep, meaningful relationship with the Lord. And it come to find out, he was involved in an organization called Campus Crusade for Christ, which is now called Crew. And I got actively involved in that. It's been said that when you go to college, you find your maker, you find your mate, and you find your mission. Well, I was headed to a conference from New Mexico to Dallas. All the college students involved in Campus Crusade got together, we took vans, we made a stop in a little town in West Texas called Big Spring, Texas. And I was introduced to a young lady who was involved in crew or campus crusade for christ at the time three months later i went on a date with that young lady and two years two months and one week later i was married to her and we both were active students involved in campus crusade for christ but we didn't immediately go to work for campus crusade for christ at that time my wife was an accountant an accounting major she went to go work in midland texas and uh, worked for an accounting firm. And I went on to get my master's at, in public administration at Texas Tech University. Uh, within a year, we, my wife had moved over to Lubbock, Texas from Midland, Texas, which was only two hours apart And uh, when we got married. And we actually worked for a season. And when I showed up on my first day of classes for graduate school, there were a handful of booths as uh, in the olden days before computers we would need to register with punch cards at the uh, student um, the student union and there were a handful of student organizations the first person who walked up to me said hi my name is al and i'm involved in an organization called campus crusade for christ have you ever heard heard of us of course i had and quickly became close friends with Al and was actively involved in a study that Al did. And over that year, my wife and I really developed a strong burden for the opportunities to share our faith in the workplace. And we thought what a better place to get that would be to join staff with Campus Crusade for Christ. And all of a sudden, that was the beginning of our nonprofit missionary career. We joined the staff of Campus Crusade for Christ in 1984. And when you join the staff of Campus Crusade for Christ, one of the things that you agree to do is you agree to raise your own salary, your own support. We have 125 individuals who have been giving, many of them, probably 80% of them have been giving since day one and have helped us all 38 years of our, of our ministry. Uh, and that was really my first experience with development, although I didn't know it and didn't think about it. All I knew was that I had to trust God for my salary and Diane's salary. Both the husband and wife come on together with Campus Crusade for Christ. We both worked uh, for a season at Texas Tech University. Each spring, you get your assignment for the next fall, for the next school year. Well, that spring I received and my wife received our assignments and it said the Office of Development, Arrowhead Springs, California. Campus Crusades headquarters at the time was in Arrowhead Springs, California. And we were assigned to work in California. So now we lived in Lubbock, Texas. We were assigned to California. That meant a big move for us but it also meant that we were going to be changing positions. We were going to have an administrative position and no longer be on the college campus. Now that was frustrating for us because we especially wanted to join just for a few years, get experience on the field, get experience with sharing our faith so we could bring that back into the workplace. And now here we find ourselves assigned to their headquarters in administrative positions. So already, we were a little bit frustrated and discouraged. Well, then come to find out, I was assigned to the Office of Development. 
My wife was doing accounting, so that was pretty understandable. I had no idea what development was. Was it land development? I had no idea that it was anything related to fundraising and fundraising. Well, I showed up the first day and started meeting individuals. And within three months, I was at a conference for development professionals in Dallas, Texas. I can remember we arrived on a Sunday and I went to my first set of sessions and I felt so much like a fish out of water. I could not feel more uncomfortable. I thought, this is not for me. What has God done? What kind of a mistake has God made? So I walked across the street to the Galleria and I circled the parking lot at the Galleria in Dallas for two hours complaining and grousing with the Lord about how he made a mistake, how he didn't have an idea at all what I needed, that this was just not the right thing for me, not the right place to be. I, I left a lucrative career to go into ministry, then ended up having to move across country, and then now I'm in a department that I really don't like and don't wanna do. But I'll tell you, after about two hours, I felt like God was saying to me, not in an audible voice, but I felt like he was speaking to my heart and saying, are you done now? Are you ready to finally start listening to what I have to say? And I, I had no more complaints in me. I surrendered at that point in time all my complaints and all my frustrations. And I can tell you, 38 years later, there is nothing more that I would have wanted to do than what I have done over the last 38 years. There are people that live their whole lives and never know what they were created to do. I was created to do development. And I, had, I almost made the mistake of stepping out of it. But God had the right answer and had the plan for my life. And he made the decision to place me in there. And I... I, I couldn't be happier. I have met people that I would have never met, uh, ministry organizational leaders who are legends. I had the opportunity to work for the founder of Campus Crusade, Bill Bright, for 18 months. I've met individuals who have been world changers, have made a difference with their money, with their industries, with their company. I have helped to run events helped to see more than a billion dollars raised in resources for the kingdom. And I have truly, truly enjoyed this role. So how did we get here? Well, it was August of 2020. And 38 years of being in the trenches, being on the field, uh, I was now faced with a pandemic. March, April, May, June, July, August, uh, five to six months. And I felt like cobwebs were starting to build in my head. And I felt like I had so much in there that God had given me. And I had, I had not been able to share that with people for the last six months and really, frankly, didn't know how long we'd be locked down in the pandemic. So I decided to sit down in front of a camera and record my first video, which had to do with uh, the difference between fundraising and in friend raising and how development was so different. And from that point on, here we are at this point, 255 plus videos, uh, two and a half years later, and I could not be happier that I have been able to bring so much information and share things. This is not me. What I am sharing is 38 years of what God has put into my life and the experiences God has given me, and I want to share that with you. And so I hope these videos have been helpful to you. I hope my story you can relate to in some way. And please know that I'm here to make a difference to help you 
raise the money that you need to have for your nonprofit organization so you can make a difference in the world. Not for the money side of things, but that you can involve partners, you can make a difference through your efforts, and you can become fully funded. That has always been the goal of this channel, and I continue to have that goal. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I appreciate you taking the time to want to be part of this. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.